In this video today we're going to have a look at how to understand a bit more about the detailing tool uh, and how to create detailing both in terms of sectional details, plan details and interior elevations in ARCHICAD and I'm probably going to be focusing more on how to do that in a two-dimensional way than a three-dimensional way but starting with our 3D model. So we previously were creating this composite relationship of a slab composite wall and a footing that we best understand in section and so we can see that the footing is made up of a little bit of a brick and a little bit of concrete which we shaped in the profile manager so that was custom built but it was then turned into a beam and once it's turned into a beam we can wrap it around the building and then very cleverly uh, once it finds a way to join, so I'm just going to drag this down for a second. Once it joins with the slab, it recognizes the fact that they're the same material, building material, with the same hatch, and it joins them together. So we lose that line that we wouldn't want to see because that would suggest that this piece of concrete and that piece of concrete would be poured separately. With the brick, the only issue that I've got at the moment is the the line weights, but I'm not too worried about that at the moment. So we see that the line weight of this wall is quite thick and therefore it looks thicker than this. So we could go into the settings here and change these. Um, when we're talking about a wall, we've got an outline which we see in plan and then we see that that didn't change that here. If we want to change the, the pen thickness of what we see here, because it's a composite, I've picked up the setting by pressing Alt or Option, click, and then that would automatically take me when I go to my element attributes, go to my composites. It's going to take me, <laughs> no it didn't, it should take me to that wall. What's, which one is this? Let's just click on it, see what it's called. RMD Brick Veneer New. It's nice when it works. RMD Brick Veneer New. And so we see that the line pens that I've got here will be reflected here. So currently these are called pen 2, and this one down here is pen 1, which is why that's a bit wrong. I could go do the same thing with this one. And I find this one under my profile manager. Brick veneer footing. I can select the outline of this and I can change that. Move this away a bit. Change that to a pen 2. Do the same thing with this one. Change that to pen 2. Store profile, that will update. And now we can see that that's updated here. Now this slab's now wrong as well because I'm updating everything else. Uh, so in cut surface, I want to make this pen 2. And now we can see that everything is as it should be. Obviously this hatch is in the wrong direction to show uh, the hatch of the uh, insulation in the wall framing. And of course, this is still a sectional detail at 1 to 100. And so we're not seeing the true reality of what this should be. And that's why we're creating this as a detail. So we, we did this in the last video. I'm just going to delete this and redo it just to show what I'm talking about. So in our toolbox, down the bottom, under documentation, we have our detail tool. Now I can create this with the polygonal, rectangular, or rotated. I'm going to use the rectangular method. I can, of course, change the name. I can go into these settings and change them first or change them later. I'm, I'm happy with the way they look, though. Therefore, I'm just going to click over the area that I want to detail, and that's where the box is going to be as well. And then I'll click where I want that detail head to sit, and then if I don't like where that's sitting, I can change its relationship as well. Generally speaking, the pink points of the box means that that allows me to move or stretch. So I can stretch it however I want to in that way. The box has a, um, a filleted edge and that's the setting so if I wanted to change that I can go into the settings and adjust those settings. 
mark a head, mark a cloud, fillet radius, so I can change those settings. And I could make it a dashed line instead of a solid line if I wanted to as well. Let's change that to um, 1 to 20 for a second. So we can see that the radius and the dash line actually change depending on the scale as well. So of course I need to understand what scale am I going to be viewing this at. So while I'm going to be creating a detail that's 1 to 10 or 1 to 5, when I'm viewing that in, in a section, uh, it would more likely be 1 to 100 or maybe 1 to 50. So I need to understand the settings of what I'm, I'm going to be viewing it at. Now, to get to this detail, how do I do that? I can select this and I can open it. It's also created it for me. So if I go down to my details, I could double click on this one here. I'll right click, open with current view settings. And it's going to take me to this detail. This detail is referenced. This box is showing me the extent. I could stretch this if I wanted to. It's not really going to help me much. My 3D model has turned into 2D elements. So my slab is now a hatch and lines. And the point of this is that I could, if I wanted to, start to manipulate this. So I could say, oh, I don't really want a line here. So I could delete that hatch and delete this line. I could say, mm, I don't really want this hatch to be here, so I can delete that. And I could start to draw things the way that I want it. Generally, I'll take off the true line weight when I'm starting to do this. And I could say, I want this to look like timber, so maybe I want it to be empty fill. I want to use the rotated rectangular method, make it 45 by 90. I want that fill to have an outline. Maybe I want that fill outline to be two. Maybe I want to have a line crossing through it to show that it is a structural timber or not dressed. Uh, and maybe I want the background to not be necessarily black and white. Maybe I want to add color, but I'm not going to do that at the moment because I'm, I'm trying to make a point. So I can start to add in my detailing um, to make it be more realistic. I could add in a, um, a wheat pole with the brick. I could add in termi mesh or granite guard or something down here. I could do all, all, all this detail, flashings, cappings, add in a earth surface, a ground floor. But because this is a modeled drawing, because this is an independent or a, a referenced detail, if I was to make any changes or just to rebuild it, We will see that anything new that I've drawn will be retained, but anything that I've deleted or changed will reappear. So while having an updatable drawing is very potentially useful, I find it quite frustrating and it tends to therefore be not the way that I work. Instead what I do is I just create a new detail and a new independent detail and I might call this one wall, uh, spell better, wall to footing detail. And with this detail I'll then use trace reference to see my new one, show as trace reference. And then I will draw over the top. Now if I'd already started to create something like this, I would take this across and I'd make sure I was working at a good scale so that the scale representation looked right. And then once I change that scale we see that the, the pen thicknesses are going to change as well. But I would then now start to draw everything again and it sounds like it's more work but I find it's actually less work start to draw everything again using fills, but now using the fill types that I want to use to show things properly.
And I've shown a lot of other videos where I um, will create a hatch like this. Let's maybe make this raked. And I can go in and find the appropriate settings. I may have one here already. That was just one I did before. Yeah, so I can pick up some of my settings from here if I want to. Not sure how I've got a brick one here somewhere. Let's just steal with some of these. Because of course once you've made something once you don't need to recreate it, that's the idea. So I can pick up the settings of my plasterboard and inject them into here. I can pick up the settings of my stud wall and inject it into here. Timber frame. Concrete. I'll just draw it this time. And brick, I don't think I've got any brick ones here, so let's find it, let's do it the long way. Uh, so RMD brick, I could use S brick, but the hatch is probably not the right sort of scale. <coughs> I've got a D brick, that's the right scale. And I want this one to be maybe render, or maybe a mortar. That, that one should be fine. And now if I wanted to, I could give a background color for these as well. Generally, I'd do like an orange and a very light gray. So I've noted before and noted again. Um, move this 10 mil up. Doing color and details doesn't necessarily meet Australian standards. Um, I find for my educational purposes, um, that showing a little bit of colour really helps to explain what I'm doing to people and that's why I do it. It communicates a lot better. Ah, I added a hatch here accidentally. I want to make that um, empty for And then once I've created one of those, I can just multiply that, spread, take that off, 86. Multiply. Great, so hopefully you can see what I'm trying to achieve. Um, obviously I've done this before, so I sort of know what I'm doing, uh, but it's not hard to do, and, and I would suggest that it's actually easier to do this and to redraw something from scratch than to be editing and mucking around with the, the reference detail that could potentially update and change on you. Uh, when I'm trying to show a break line, um, I promised that I'd show this. I will tend to just use a fill. And I'll use a white fill without an edge. And by doing that, it creates this ghost look. That's not a really nice place to cut it. That's a bit better. The intention of this is that I'm not showing a line. Because if I was showing a line, that would mean that I'm, I've got a, a slither of a brick or the brick stops there. By showing just a white line, it means that it's continuing on. I'm just choosing not to show it. Now, that, again, that's not a technical way of doing that. A technical way would be to use a break line. Now, if we go into design, choose our object, click here and write break. There used to be a 2D referencing tool called a break line. Here's one here. So we could download that if I wanted to. I don't want to cut. Uh, but otherwise, we could just make a break line of our own. I'm going to use a polyline, make it fairly thick. And I'm just going to draw a break line.
bring that to the front. And if then I want to do this really, really well, then I will just add in the white fill into this shape here and take it out from here. <coughs> and that way I can select this and move it around as much as I want. So if I want that to sit over the brick like that it can. So there are some break line objects that I've just created one custom. Uh, or you could just potentially use a white fill that does basically the same thing by making sure that we're not seeing an edge. Seeing the edge is the biggest problem and that's what we're trying to avoid. So that's how we can create 2D detailing. Um, that's one obviously that I've created early and I use some of the settings to make this one. Where do we get that from? It came from here. I'm just using this as a trace reference. What is this? It's 2D information taken from our 3D model. So the more information you add into model, the less 2D detailing or drafting you will potentially need to do. But at some stage, generally, everyone will end up having to revert back to 2D detailing if you're going to show your project in a lot of detail. So you decide for yourself, how bimmed do you want to go or how 2D do you want to go? Obviously, if you're going to go 2D, you're wasting your time um, with your 3D model, but I would suggest that 3D modeling and BIM building information modeling is a lot better than 2D drafting from scratch. Uh, we can create a 3D model and then we can do a lot of stuff with it. So in the next um, video we're going to have a look at how to create internal elevations to detail something like a bathroom.